What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to dynamically resize a window with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, in this video we're going to look at resizing windows dynamically, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $27, which is insanely cheap. Alright, in this video, like I said, we're going to look at resizing windows dynamically after the fact, after the program runs. We already know how to resize a window from the start. We just set our root.geometry to uh, this is width and this is height, whatever we want. I should mention I've got just our basic starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and a Git Bash Terminal as always. So we know, like I said, this is the width and this is the height. So we can change this dynamically. Let's just create a button real quick and let's go my button and that's a button and we want to put it in root and we want the text to say resize and let's give this a command of resize. And then let's my button dot pack this guy on the screen, give it a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit. So now we can create this resize function. So let's go define resize. And we can just pass in this same exact thing right here with a different size. So for instance, if we want 500 by 500, this will resize the screen. So if we save this real quick and let's run this, I named it size.py. So we see, here's our window, we click resize, boom, it resizes, right? That's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And I think we probably already understand that that's how that works. But what happens if you want to do it sort of dynamically with, for instance, user entered parameters, or if you want to pass variables, how do you do that? Well, it's actually a little bit tricky because this is in quotation marks. So that causes a bit of a problem. So let's create some variables. Let's go with equals uh, let's say 500 and let's go h equals 500. Now if we try and pass these in for width and height like this, we're going to get an error. So let's save this and run it and just make sure we do get an error here. And nothing happens when we click our button and we see bad geometry specifier w and h. And that's just like I said, this is in quotation marks. So Python and Kinter doesn't know that these are variables. It thinks that this is just a string. Right, so that's kind of a problem. So how do we fix that? Well, there's like a zillion different ways we can do this uh, using different types of substitution. Probably the easiest way is to use an F string. You just put an F in front of it here and then just wrap whatever you want in curly brackets. Now it will sort of substitute out whatever's in here with our variables up here. So now if we save this and run it, and click resize, boom, it resizes and it works. So like I said, there's a bunch of different ways you can sort of substitute variables into strings. Uh, this is probably the easiest way. Let's go ahead and copy this and comment this out. And let's see, what else could we do? We could, we could format. So let's call this width and this uh, height. And then we can slap a dot format on here and then just define those variables. So we could go width equals W and height equals H. That's sort of an older way to do it. it still works, still completely valid. If we save this and run it, for instance, we see, boom, that still works, right? So that's one way to do it. Uh, what else? We could do, let me comment this out again. We could do really old school and get rid of this F and we can pass in these uh, percent signs i for integer because these are numbers, these are integers. If we were doing strings, we would do s here. If we were doing floats, we would do f, but you know, we could, we could do i and same thing here. And then outside of our quotation marks, we can call that percentage sign again and then just pass in w and h like that. That would work. That's way old school. That's like Python 2.0, right? Save this, run it. Boom, that still works. So any of those methods will work. You know, I would probably just do this F string thing. That's sort of the, the most current way to substitute variables out. So that's how you could do that. Now, what about if we wanted to pass, for instance, user generated height and width, right? If we had entry boxes, well, let's do that real quick. So let's create a label and let's call this uh, width underscore label. And it's a label. 
and we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal width and let's go with label dot pack and let's give this a pad y of 20 to push it down a little bit and then we could go with underscore entry and this is going to be an entry box and we want to put this in root and now we can go with entry dot pack to pack that onto the screen and same thing we can go height underscore label and that's a label and we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal say height right and then we can go height label dot pack and let's give this a pad y of 20 just push it down a little bit and then finally we can go height underscore entry and that's an entry box and we want to put it in root and then we can height entry dot pack this onto the screen so okay let's save this and run it just to make sure i got all that right since i did that very quickly and okay so now we have a width and a height box uh when we click this until it doesn't take in these parameters yet so we still have to code that out so let's do that real quick so we could just come up to our width and go width underscore entry dot get to get that same thing with our height we can go height underscore entry dot get and that should work so if we go ahead and save this let's run this and so if we wanted to change this to 300 by 300 boom we could do that if we want to change the width to a thousand by 300 boom that works like that whatever you like and now it, it works dynamically so that's how you resize windows after the fact um, you can do it programmatically, you could use variables, you could hard code it in, or you could take user entered data just like we did there at the end. And uh, pretty simple, just remember, since this is in quotation marks, you have to sort of substitute in these variables using an F string is probably the easiest way, but I gave you a couple other ones too, just depending on what your program calls for, you're probably gonna get away with using this method like 95% of the time. But if for some reason you need to do it a different way, there's a couple other older ways to do it, either way works fine. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.